Hello everybody, this is Alexander Williamson with the secret history living inside your aquarium. So, what are we looking at other than an overgrown aquascape? Yeah, Limnophilia needs a big trim, a little uh, Rotala butterfly is way out of control, the Rotala fructata really out of control, but I love that plant, it is a beautiful plant, uh, or not Rotala, sorry, Cabamba furtata. Furktata. And uh, what I wanted to talk to you guys today about, talk to you guys about today, there we go, uh, is flow, as in current, motion, water moving. So, in this tank, I have replaced my former 200, uh, my, my uh, power head that was in this corner, and which used to move 200 gallons an hour. And I've increased it to a 500 gallons an hour power head. Uh, needless to say, they are getting blasted right through this empty space here. And it reflects off that, and then it shears down the glass all the way into over here. And actually wraps around down here enough that it's warped these plants backwards. So it, it actually leaves a calm spot. Well, here, this is a little vortex you can see right here. So it's going to be fairly calm in that little gyre or vortex. But what I wanted to show you was the change in behavior once I put in this 500-gallon-an-hour uh, power head. Now, it's done a 360, or not a 360. That would be all the way back around to where we started. Sorry, folks. It's done a 180. <laughs> and uh, you can see fish are out that were never out in groups earlier. I have been seeing nonstop group behavior by my pandagaras and also by my panda quarries. So, of course, I say that, and right now there's only one, and it's just going nuts in the current, having fun. But it's really the truth is that they're... they're uh, they're hanging out my uh, red, now this is going to be hard to see, but my super red ancestress back there, he is doing a killer job of staying out where usually he hides from me. He loves being on the right under the edge of that flow. Um, I don't know if that's where stuff settles out of the current maybe on that rock, but both of the ancestress have been there and... Uh, the the uh, Daniels are pretty much just hanging out back there in the the slow current. It's a current, but it's uh, it's a lot slower. But the whole point being of me filming this and talking to you guys is that not just putting flow in, but adjusting the speed of flow. Look at that! Look at that little tiger Teddy having fun swimming around in the in the stream. Uh, here comes some uh, Danios. Since this is such a hill stream tank with the Danios uh, and also with uh, Corydoras and things, it's it's just kind of hilarious to me to watch them have fun and play in the current. There, here's the other red, super red ancestress right there. Um, but yeah, so it, it, everyone from the Danio. Uh, all, all four Danio species in here uh, all like flow. Here's the Tin Winai Danios, and they like hanging out in the flow. But the the interesting behavior that I was seeing was that the uh, Panda Garas were actually cleaning up the glass right here, and there were like all five or six of them hanging out together in the flow. Um, here's another one up here. So, what are the pros other than fish watching, watching behavior change? Well, some of the pros are that it distributes uh, oxygen throughout the tank regularly. Now, this tank doesn't really need help with that because it's got a 75-gallon uh, hang off the back and a 75-gallon hang off the back filter on either end. 
it's overfiltrated, and each of those creates a flow, which kind of meets somewhere in the middle anyways by the stick. Uh, here you can see the panda guards hanging out together. Uh, and they're just funny to watch. They, they have, like, these little suction cup fins... And they can just withstand the most current. They, like It's just hilarious to watch them work with each other. And then they'll fight as that on that dimension. So, if that doesn't make sense to you, uh, you know, usually we fight with the ground as the orientation. Well, they can fight with the, the glass as their orientation and their bellies to me. And so, it's funny watching the males fight for dominancy on that surface it, it looks impossible but they're mostly just cleaning up the plants and doing a way better job of doing so so when you have the flow up this high you can see that the ancestress the pandagaras everybody can get into new spots that they don't normally go in and they can get enough oxygen and things coming into their their gills that they'll go down into areas and climb in between plants that they just didn't really uh, visit as much before. Honestly, this red, uh, this super red uh, ancestress, if, if I turn down the contrast a bit, or turn up the contrast a bit, you, this is actually the color I'm seeing with my bare, bare eyes, <clears throat> my human eyes. Uh, they're, they're this kind of color, like a dark pinkish orangey red um but regardless so now the pandagars are back on the glass and i just want to make the little thump thump noise when they stick onto the glass but yes as i was saying one of the really good things about having flow i don't know if this will prove to be too much flow and so i might have to turn it down just a smidge but uh it turns out that it really, really changes the behavior of your critters. So if you have some interesting critters, I mean, uh, and, and by saying that, I, I don't mean to downplay anyone else, like tetras and a lot of nanofish. They are very uh, dynamic, interesting, awesome. But some of the specialist fish, some of the hill stream fish, or some of the fish that really like current, uh, whether, you know, wh whatever fish that may be, loaches and things like that, it's really fun uh, to watch them hang out in the current and just loving life. Uh, it, it really inspires you that, man, I didn't give them what they needed before. And in this tank, it has to do with the fact that I really didn't have... I didn't know where to situate the the current because I couldn't for for optimal viewing in my selfish taste that is so I didn't know or I couldn't tell that it needed to be uh hitting the front glass so that's another thing I learned and I think that that's probably going to play out to be true for a lot of you uh try having your your power head you're looking at it right there in the back corner pointed at the front glass at an angle so it's coming like this and ricocheting off the glass into a spiral here and then it's it's also coming down the line and wrapping back into here so it creates a half dead zone for the fish ideally you don't want actual dead zones and so when i say dead zone i don't i don't mean dead zone i mean that the the water here moves much slower in the back where these guys are. You can see they're still aligning with the current. They're still catching some of that current. Uh, but it's just not the intensity that would they have to swim against that is up out here. And so I lost some of the fish by being able to look at them. Um, but I really like watching the quarries and the pandagaras just go crazy in the current. So... Uh, we'll see how they settle out in the end, totally. It looks like some of the Daniels are remembering, oh yeah, I'm evolved to swim in this stream too. Uh, so hopefully they'll start getting with the program. But right now they're all huddled up together, just hanging out back there in the week, weaker stream. So, yeah, 
what does the stream do for us? The stream oxygenates water. The stream uh, co 2 genates. <laughs> I don't think that's a word, right, guys? Uh, it distributes CO2 around the tank, which is great for an aquascape tank. And it also really stops stuff from just browning and snagging and looking like this in this corner. I mean, I'll have to take care of this on my own. That's fine. I, I understand that. But, uh, you know, it, it, actually, it actually knocks the debris and the algae and things off of the leaves. So I'd highly recommend you guys try changing it up. Try changing the flow. Alright guys, I'll talk to you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.